Hey everybody, I get asked a lot of questions about my background in music, what influenced me, what inspired me, you know, what kind of lessons I took, what kind of degree I got. I want to give you a brief background on myself. So I was born and raised in Flint, Michigan. Um, I, I won't dog Flint too much, but it just, it, it's not the greatest place to live in my opinion. Glad I don't live there anymore. Sorry, people who live in Flint. I just, I prefer not to live there, so sorry. Anyway, we, I, we did not have a lot of money. Um, I never had private voice lessons. I was lucky enough to have two parents who are musicians. My dad um, was actually a very well-traveled musician. He went all over the country in different groups. He was in a, a duo, but he was also in a big group called the Spurlows. Um, so he had tons of experience, professional experience, singing, playing guitar, and playing bass. And he he did all genres of music too. Um, I mean, he was definitely classically trained, but for the most part did rock, country, gospel music, folk music, a lot of folk music. Okay, that aside, my mom, um, kind of a genius in that department, she's also classically trained, um, really great on the piano, um, also played a horn, and um, so she and my dad both nurtured that in me from the very beginning. Like, I learned to read when I was two, and that's when they just started instilling all these information and knowledge in music. So I was very grateful to learn, you know, how to breathe correctly from square one or have uh, intonation like matching pitch or learning how to harmonize, right? All of those things. Like the three of us would sit there and sing harmony when I was a little kid. So yes, I was very lucky. Had I not had two parents who were musicians, um, I don't know that I would be sitting right here right now talking to you because our, you know, our our school system was poor as well so of course they cut the arts and the music programs first right I didn't really start getting into music until I was in band in junior high so I'm a teenager at that point right learning an instrument um, high school I was able to join the high school choir um, the only other choir I had ever been in was the church choir and of course my mom was the choir director so see again I got lucky um, that being said, um, I knew, I, I loved playing oboe. I played the oboe. It's a melodic instrument and it's actually comparable to singing. I've said this in some of my other videos, um, the, the breath support and breath control that you need to play a double reeded instrument or really any horn requires the same everything. It just requires the same everything that you would need to do for singing. So I thought that was pretty cool and that really did help me become a much better singer. Now that being said, I was still behind the game. When I chose to go to college, I was not as up on things, believe it or not, as a lot of my counterparts who had had professional private lessons. You know how it is, like when you're getting lessons from your parents, um, you know, I don't know about you, but I half the time was not interested because they were my parents. And I'm like, leave me alone. I want to go do something else. Still, I had the exposure, which was good, but I still had a lot to learn. And so I learned, I learned a lot of stuff late in the game in college and again in grad school. So grad school, I moved out here to Boston and went to Boston Conservatory before they joined with Berkeley and wanted to pursue a master's degree in classical singing. You know, I had done a lot of musical theater before that. I decided, okay, I wanna lean more toward classical singing now. And boy, did I learn a ton. I, I loved the education that I received there. I wish I could have gotten more of it actually, cause there's just so much and it was a great experience. Um, it certainly made me the singer I am today. Do I sing classically uh, on a regular basis? No, not really. Um, right now I make money singing R&B, jazz, rock, a um, little bit of country, um, pop, top 40. I have my own acoustic duo. We play in like local restaurants and clubs. Um, we get hired for private events. I have a big band that also gets hired for private events. Again, we do a lot of dance music. So. You know, imagine starting from like this musical theater classical singing to top 40 high energy dance, R&B, pop, Motown type of singing. So I've done it all. I love, I love the diversity of singing and I've heard from so many different teachers and singers. You know, some people say, well, you have to be classically trained. There's no other way to do it. 
I'm inclined to agree to a certain point because there's a lot with the classical foundation that can't be ignored. You can't, I personally, I would not have the range and the power behind my Whitney Houston songs if it weren't for my classical training. So like it or not, there, there are a lot of foundational elements that, you know, it's kind of like taking a vitamin. I personally enjoyed it, but a lot of people don't. So just know that there are options out there. I like to include the classical side of things, but I have plenty of contemporary exercises that I use as well with myself, with my students, and it keeps things more fun and interested or interesting, especially if you're not at all interested in that classical realm. Though I encourage you to check it out anyway, because I think you might be pleasantly surprised. I think people often um, do themselves a disservice with when they don't dig into it more. They just assume that all opera is the same. It's not. There's a ton of opera out there that I do not like, that I just can't stand. But there's, there's some out there that's actually very beautiful. And I've been able to convert a lot of people by exposing them to the right kind of stuff. So maybe I'll do a video on that some other time. I know this sounds like I'm rambling a lot, but I just wanted to give you a quick background on, you know, where I'm from, why I moved out here and how long I've been doing this. So, you know, I've been teaching, I've been teaching a long time, um, over 10 years, I guess, by now. Um, and I sing, I perform every weekend. Um, even during the, the height of the pandemic, I was still able to get some performances in. They were outdoors, it was great. But I love that I can share this experience with you because, you know, I like teaching because I like showing people of all ages and all backgrounds, because you can come from any kind of background, right? Um, and you might it might be harder for you than it is for others. Some things come easier to people than others, you know? I had to struggle a lot. It took me a long time to like understand and get really good at music theory, for example, or certain aspects of singing that I just hadn't been taught by my parents. So remember how I mentioned earlier, I was kind of behind the game in that department. So. That being said, I like sharing with you all, no matter what your skill level is, the stuff that I wish I had learned or ways that I wish I had been taught. I, I can see why certain things can seem monotonous or stale or maybe they don't make sense and someone isn't explaining it well enough and then you just don't bother following up on it and then they don't really bother explaining it any other way. That happened with me a lot as a student and you know, the more I teach, the more I learn about all the different learning abilities. So I'm here to help you with all of that and to hopefully make it more fun and interesting, but also uplifting. I want to encourage you to stay the course. Know that, you know, I want you to do your best not to play the comparison game. Like, don't compare yourself to Whitney Houston. Don't compare yourself to your sister who's been singing longer than you have or you know your your friend over there who's had lessons for longer than you whatever the case may be think of it in terms of you know why why you love it because you love it you love to sing you're choosing to do it think of it in terms of personal growth you're doing it to pursue your own joy your own passion um, you want to learn something new and you want to do something well and and do something fulfilling so it's really hard not to play the comparison game, but do your best not to. I'm here to help you with all of that. I want to encourage you. I want to uplift you. I want to share as much information with you as in as many different ways as possible. Um, and if you still are struggling or you have questions, I want you to reach out to me because I'm happy to answer. See, I wish I had someone, honestly, I wish I had had someone like me. I know that sounds kind of arrogant and I don't mean it that way, but I do wish that I had had a teacher willing to uh, sit down and explain something 18,000 different ways until I got it. You know what I mean? Cause I, that's what I like to do for you. So, you know, I'll make as many videos as it takes. I will answer your questions in the comments, whatever it is, ask me, let me know. There's nothing that's, that's gonna sound stupid or too basic. Um, it's all good stuff and I'm so excited and happy to help you with it. So there's my long-winded story about my background, why I'm here, why you're here, how I wanna help you. And yeah, so I hope this was helpful and start asking questions, fire away. 
And of course, I highly encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Also, I have a, um, a little singer's toolkit that I want you to check out. So if you click on, I, there's a link below, click on my singer's toolkit thing. I'll, I'll leave a link, you'll see it. Um, so that you get even more information, all right? So subscribe, ask questions, let me know what you think, give me feedback, check out my singer's toolkit, all that jazz, all right? See you soon.